Hey, I'm Steve Cook from the Fish Ecology and Conservation Physiology Lab here at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. Today we're going to talk about Fishing Nets 101. Uh, and I'm Taya and I was an undergrad at Carleton University. Excellent. And Taya actually did her undergrad thesis on a question that many of you probably have. And, you know, what net type is best for the fish? If you're going to use a net, you're presumably, uh, and intend to release the fish, you probably want to choose a net type that's going to ensure that that fish is uh, released in a way that it's going to survive and do well. And so that's exactly the, what Taya did. So what did you, can you tell us a bit more about your so study? So we looked at the effects of net mesh on fish injury and damage, and we looked at four different types of nets. Cool. And what species did you work with? Uh, we worked with brook trout and in a Kanaka recreational fishing grounds. Great, great. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the different nets we've got with us. Let's start off with uh, with this one. We're going to start on the, the bad end of the spectrum. So this is the uh, knotted polypropylene net, and it's got really thin mesh with big holes and a lot of knots. And we found that the fish often got uh, frayed fins and lots of scale loss or mucus loss. Um, when we use this kind of net. Right, right. And you guys even dubbed this one the fish killer. So yeah. this is the, the unfortunate part is this is also the cheapest <laughs> net. So if you go to the store and are looking for the absolute cheapest net on the shelf, it's, it's typically going guy. to be this kind of net. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to discard that net. That's a net that we'd, we'd, we'd love folks to not use. Yeah. Um, but we've got some other, other net types. So let's, let's talk about this one. Now this one's interestingly the same type of net material that you usually find in fish hatcheries. So presumably <laughs> this is pretty good for fish. What did you find? Yep. So this one is a knotless nylon uh, mesh and uh, because of the small holes it was really good at helping to support the fish and resulted in very little fin fraying. Um, it did result in a little bit of mucus loss and scale loss though and uh, we also found because of the small holes that there was a lot of hook tangling there. Right. Now, the, the hook tangling tended to come from, uh, or what complicated was the barbs, right? Yeah. So, uh, so if you're able to pinch the barbs or use barbless hooks, uh, that's something that you can reduce as well. So that if it does get, if the hook does get tangled in there and the fish is in with it, mm -hmm. uh, then it'll slide out much more easily. Okay, so here we've got a, another uh, net type. So this is uh, similar to the, the knotless nylon, but it's been rubberized. So what yeah. did you find with this one? So this one was pretty good overall. It resulted in moderate kind of uh, scale loss and mucus loss. Um, again, the small mesh kind of resulted in a little bit of hook tangling. Um, but, yeah. but rectified with pinching the barbs. So, yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, all right, and then lastly we have uh, a rubber net, it's, got, it's, it's a little bit pliable, um, you know, the, the mesh size is about, uh, about half inch, about a centimeter or so in, in diameter. Mm -hmm. uh, what'd you find with this one? So we found that actually this one was really good, it was a nice and soft material, it helped support the fish and uh, was not too bad for fin fraying, scale loss and mucus loss because of the big holes as well. Um, it minimized air time because the hook was super easy to just take out. Yep. Excellent. Okay, so at the end of the day, we're pretty happy with all three of these net types, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. um, you know, basically, if you're gonna if you're gonna use a net, uh, all three of these are acceptable. We certainly encourage people to pinch the barbs yeah. to reduce tangling, mm -hmm. uh, but. One other thing to consider is do you need a net in the first place? So uh, I like to think about nets as something that I use when uh, I'm handling a fish that's a little bit difficult where I yeah. need that, that help, uh, you know. Uh, particularly just, slippery or. Yeah, yeah, to restrain the fish. And I think of it both from the perspective of the fish, what's better from the fish, but it's also what's better for, for me or whoever I'm with. Uh, sometimes you need to restrain the fish so you can get your pliers and, you know, reduce the likelihood that you're going to get injured as well. So it's yeah. a fish injury. And and also safety of the uh, of the angler. Uh, certainly fish are wet and slimy. Yes, can't so avoid that. Can't avoid that. So uh, if you are going to hold the fish, it certainly make uh, and use bare hands, uh, either do it in the water, keep them wet, or if you're going to take them out of the water, do so uh, briefly. Uh, you know, you could do it over a cooler, yeah. uh, but you don't want to be doing it over the grass or over the sand or over the carpet of your boat. So if you drop the boat, uh, drop the fish, it ends up flopping around yeah. and losing more scales, getting bruised, and so on. Yeah. So, so, so think about it. You don't always need a, a net. Don't reach for one if you don't need to. Uh, but if you're going to, uh, hopefully, the information that we provided you will help you make the right choice uh, for the fish and for uh, for you, the angler. Uh, thanks for thanks for listening. Uh, we'll have a link at the end to the the paper that Taya wrote that this research is is based on. Ciao.